alongside the legend, Tom Wallace. And Tom, I'm excited about this one here in women's ski slope style. So many countries represented, seven different countries represented in this eight skier field. Yeah, this course is looking amazing. We had a super progressive big air event last night and a lot to talk about. We got Johanna Killy in the field, the Norwegian who's got the most medals of any Norwegian ever in X Games. Maggie Boys in the US girl and then Mathilde Grimaud as well who's got so many interesting double cork rotations. It looks to be a very impressive day here in the women's ski slope style final. Yep, and there you see a look at some of our favorites. Mathilde Grimaud, as you mentioned, she will be right there in the mix in this group. Certainly Maggie Voisin, but Johanna Keeley, who broke the record for medals amongst Norwegian athletes yesterday with the bronze and big air. Can her luck continue here today in slope style? Here's a look at her gold medal back in 2017. So very cool there, getting the gold medal here on home turf. But then, you know, something to talk about, not in the field here today is Kelly Sildaro. She is always one to watch out for. She is dominant in slope style, so not here today. So kind of opens the door right. for some of these other women, especially someone like Maggie Voisin, 2018 gold medalist. She wants to get back on top of that podium. She got the double cork 12 last night in big air. Will we see it today in slope style? Maggie, the only American to win this event before. Can she get back on top? As you said, no Kelly Silveru leaving the door open here today at Hoffiel. There is a great look at this course. It is absolutely monstrous. A look at our format though. We've got eight skiers. It's a 32 minute jam ranking based on overall impression. What does that mean? mean. Essentially, you can fall, but that doesn't have to be the end of it. Can you have a hammer run? It's a body of work. Yeah, definitely. So the judges are obviously in slope style, still looking for these women to put down a full slope style run. You got to land one full run, but also anytime you have a bobble on a rail, you still have the ability to do other tricks in that run to stand out, to showcase a new big maneuver. So really, there's no throwaway one runs. We're gonna see lots of action, no scores, just a leaderboard that's gonna consistently update as these women continue to land new and varied runs. So here's Margot Hackett dropping in for her second X Games appearance. As you can tell, slight rainfall coming down here at Hafiel Resort. How's that going to play into the conditions here today, Tom? Yeah, if anything, the rainfall is going to affect the visibility a little bit. So you're going to get some rain droplets on those goggles, make it a little harder to see. But it's also softening up the snow. It was a little icy and a little firm, and now it's softening up a bit. So hopefully it'll make it a little safer and a little bit easier for these women to throw down some bigger tricks, especially on the jumps. Here's Margo, so clean through the rail section, off that last final rail a little early. There's the left side, 540, coming into this bottom hit. Will we see the big switch going just switch 180 there? So she's got the capability, we saw in big air, to do a switch 900. So opting to just kind of keep it safe there. Perhaps just this rail bobble, maybe throwing her off and then playing it a little safe, wanting to get the speed dialed. The one thing to watch out for is the wind. The rain doesn't really affect these athletes. It's more the wind. So if you see the flags blowing and there's any sort of headwind, that's what makes it a little sketchy for the speed. So here's Megan Oldham winning her first X Games medal yesterday, a gold in big air. Kind of came out of nowhere, too. I mean, definitely she was on our radar, but not somebody I had picked for gold, but came out two really big jump tricks, the switch 1080 and the double cork 12 last night. So let's see if she can put that together, kind of use that motivation from last night's win out here on the slope course. 270 on, smooth on that rail, into the first jump feature spinning to the right side, so looking for a big switch left spin off this final jump. Switch going 9, 1080. Whoa. Whoa. Huge 1080, so a big run there for Megan to start things off. So Oldham picking up where she left off, fresh off her gold medal performance in big air. Here in big air, we saw her lock in the mute grab, holding it the entire time, so on that run, 
touching the grab and then having to open up. So a lot of runs, though. We got a lot of time left in the clock. Great to land a first run and then build and improve on that. If you have a bobble and you fall in the first run, it's a lot to get back. So here's Isabel Atkin dropping in for her first run. Going onto that unique rail. A lot of options there, so a ton of variety. These rail features are massive, by the way. I mean, oh, going for the quarter pipe. Very fun use of the course there. Adding a little flair to this run already. 270 out into the first jump feature. Big switch, 720. So following along, looking to mirror that rotation, showcase the right side spin on the final jump, switch 900 and gets it. Isabel, great run there to start things off. Had that creative quarter pipe hit. Very nice on the rails, getting to the end of all these. There's the K-Fed there to start things off. And here's that big switch 900. So not as much spin as we saw from Megan, but getting the grab for perhaps a bit longer, really stomping that landing. I think that's going to take her to the top. You called it Isabel Atkin. After not seeing her in big air yesterday, good to see her put it down on this course on run number one. Jenny Lee Berman said she really rode well in big air yesterday, didn't get on the podium. Can she change her luck here in slope today? Known for some of her rail technicality, she's got a lot of switch ups, a lot of variations on the rails that she can show off. And with so many rail features and a minimum amount of jump features, I think the rails are really where these women are gonna be able to like make or break the run. There's the switch up 270. So very clean, very controlled on the edges there. Oh, the switch left 720. So looking over the right shoulder, looking to mirror that rotation to the right. Switch right side 540, so very clean, very smooth run there. Not the biggest rotations on the jumps, but again, a lot of rail options, and she was definitely the most technical on the rail so far. Tech over everything, and she has a certain level of confidence that you can see in her riding, and she's the youngest competitor in this field. Jenny Lee taking over the top spot, and as you said, even without perhaps less than the impressive jump section, she can only go up from here. Really, it, not necessarily not impressive in terms, it's just in technicality. Very impressive in the style and the control, but yeah, definitely on the mellower side in, the ter in terms of the spins. So here's Julia Tano. Oh, the disaster there on the double kink, slowing down into that down rail, doing the switch up. So smooth through the rails into these jumps. Oh, the big switch, 900, no! Julia going down on that one, looking for the switch 900 on that first of two jumps, and that first one isn't too big. So going 900 on that one, we have yet to see any of the other ladies take it to 900 off that jump. So big rotation there, and just not able to hold on to the landing. Here's the front side switch up. So clean through the end of the rails. You, judges would like to see them grinding the whole rail. But getting to the end of the rail and successfully showing that balance is how you score the best through that rail section. Maggie Voisin, a silver in big air last night. Adding to her X Games medal collection, she's got six overall. She's won this event before. Knows exactly what to do to win this event clean through the rails will help, and then into the big jumps where we saw that double cork and big air. We'll probably see that at some point today. Will we see it on the first run, or will she opt to strategize and warm up into that big rotation? Going right side 720 on that first jump. Lining up forward, we could see the double cork. Oh going for the Rodeo 9 instead. So super clean run, looking to just put one down and then improve from there. There's the disaster, so gapping to the second down. Here's the 270 on, gets a little forward, but still grinds the end of that rail. Saw the right side 720 into that Rodeo 900. So diving forward, unique rotation, 
good first run there for Maggie Boysen. Putting her up into second, and I love that. We talk about the strategy. There's a couple of different flavors, right? You climb the ladder, perhaps what Maggie's trying to do, or you go for that hammer right out of the gate and try to get the rest of the field chasing you. Yeah, We've seen of both here. of those strategies work in this new format. It really depends on just what the athletes look and do. I mean, some people just want to go for their hardest run, and others need that motivation from a landed run to really help push them. Oh, a very cool hand plant there for Matilde. So we did not see Matilde ride in big air last night. She had a crash in practice that kept her out of the final event, but feeling up for it today and starting things off with a bang there with the Rodeo 900 into this final jump going switch 720 very clean first run there for matilde matilde has had so much success excuse me in big air yet to find the podium in her slope style career but with runs like that that could change yeah so a little off that rail early but the first woman we've seen go for the switch up on that sort of i call it the spider rail where there's so many options so going for that switch up transfer so really technical and then the rest of the run was just smooth so yeah jump into the top spot there that leaderboard will continue to update and change so keep an eye on that as these women are dropping any landed run that helps improve their status or standing is going to change consistently so the Norwegian, Johanna Keeley, a bronze yesterday in big air. She has won slope style before trying to add to those seven X Games medals. Smooth to the rails, known for her rail skills. She's got a double cork variation on the jumps and a lot oh. of going for the switch 270 onto that super tall down rail. That is so technical. Wow. Looks to be okay, possibly just a bit shaken up. So got a little confused there. It looked like she was looking over both shoulders, trying to figure out how to get onto that rail switch and then just going for it. I mean, that's a high risk maneuver there. Huge, that rail is as tall as her. It's four or five feet off the ground. It's a super technical rail there. Watch as she comes off this rail switch, then sort of trying to figure out how to get over to it and just slipping out. That is a gnarly crash and for that a rail that replay slide. shows you just how massive that rail is. We do hope that Johanna is okay. But a lot of runs left. Should get at least three, maybe four. So a lot of opportunities for Johanna to put together another full run. Closing in on 23 minutes, 30 seconds here in our final. Margot Hackett for her second run. Going under the rail, then gapping on there. Nice backside 270 out, spoke too soon. So going a little too fast on that one. And if you don't catch that transitional landing just right, it's really hard to maintain that landing. You're coming down to just flat. So run's not over. She still has a chance with this format to impress the judges on the jumps so that then in the end, these all these different sort of tricks you're doing are sort of bonus points toward your overall impression. How do you think the judges are evaluating the approach on that spider rail? Because we are seeing some skiers go under and we're seeing some actually jump on. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously, the people doing the longer grind, so doing the switch up around the top, that's definitely the hardest. The longer you grind, unique, going under it, gapping over it, all of that is cool, and anything different is creative, so I think the judges are rewarding creativity, but the longer you grind, so some of those more technical switch up maneuvers are definitely the harder things. The longer you're on the rail, the harder it is to get to the end, so that's definitely being rewarded with someone like Matilde being in right. first, and you're just seeing that. So here's Megan Oldham sitting in fifth place. Already had such a successful X Games experience here, winning gold in women's ski big air last night. Now here in slope, looking to use and build off that confidence. 270 onto that huge down rail. Again, we can't speak enough about how high off the ground that one is. Oh, going for the right side, 720. Here into the bottom jump. Big 
900 with the tail grab. Smooth run for Megan. You bring up a really good point, Tom, about already having a successful X Games with, with certainly the gold in big air. Kind of was off the radar a little bit coming into Aspen, yep. but we've seen it across disciplines at X Games every year where a young athlete comes in and nowhere. maybe shocks the world and wins. It kind of gets a taste for that and then they start riding with some more momentum. More confidence, right. I think more than anything, once she has that experience, she gets on top of the podium, she's like, wow, I can compete, I can win against this field, and it gives you the like, well, I wanna keep doing that, and you, you then can drop in with more confidence, and you're just gonna be better off. So yeah, using that, jumping up into second place wow. there, so on the podium for now. So here's Isabel Atkin now in fifth place. Gapping up from the side. Here's that long, gets the blind 270 into that transitional landing. Lip slide onto the down rail. Oh, coming around to the side, going for the quarter pipe. Oh, nice. very cool. Only woman we've seen thus far going for that quarter pipe hit with the rodeo 540 and then into the switch 720. So a really unique run there. I love that line selection. That's something, so the judges want to see variation, and if you're the only one doing that hit, if you're the only one going off that quarter pipe feature, that's going to score well. Not just because you're the only one doing it, but clearly just because it's creative. It's something maybe no one else saw. Most creative award going to Isabel Atkin early, and as you said, just shaking it up. That alone has to put her up in the standings. We shall see. She's currently in fifth place, but we expect a big jump after that one. Yep, Ooh, all yeah. the way up into second. Bumping it, out Jenny Lee Bermanson, who was in podium position. She's now in fourth. Oh, skipping that rail. Oh. So coming off the rail switch, and I think she wanted to come off forward. So just kind of avoiding that rail. But again, format works right. so that this is not a throwaway. This is not totally done. She still has a chance to impress, move up the leaderboard with some amazing jumps here down below. Right side, 540. So seeing mostly 540s and some 720s out of her, keeping the rotation small, but the style good, getting really smooth grabs, very smooth and just consistent on these spins. And I think what's tough for Jenny Lee Bermanson, a, a great differentiator for her, is the rail section. Yep. So when things don't work out for her on the top, that puts her at a bit of a disadvantage going into this jump section. Yeah, the jumps, she's definitely smooth on, but definitely not doing the most technical tricks. Where on the rail, she's got some switch up maneuvers and some highly technical spins. And yeah, just having to kind of, couple bobbles on that rail section. So not gonna be a big improvement of any and uh, look to improve on the you know, coming runs. Julia Tano, sitting in seventh place. Oh, getting the front side 450 out there. So off to a good start, 270 out. Combos galore going down here. There's the disaster into this down rail. Gets the switch up again, very consistent on the rails. Oh, going for the switch nine. Can she get the landing? She does. Yep. Much better. Huge improvement from run number one into the final jump, going double cork 1080. Yes. Our first double cork rotation of the day. Julia Tano absolutely stomping that one. And Ta it's all yeah. about, sorry, Tom, but it's all about getting this nine right here. Yeah. And it's ball game if she can put that down and for this 10 that's what can close the door on the rest of this field most definitely that was a full pull the rails combined with the switch nine and the double cork definitely the best and most technical run we've seen thus far yeah that nine getting hung up on on the first run no problem here on attempt number two and no surprise tano taking over the top spot here's maggie voison Clean with the switch to backside 270 out there. So not necessarily skipping a rail, but because she came off that rail so forward, those side hit features she wasn't able to utilize. But here going 270, 270 off. So upping the ante on that one. Switch into this first feature. 
Switch 900. Whoa, Keeping okay. up with Julia. Will we see Maggie match the double cork rotation on this bottom jump? Opting for the right side 900. So back to back 900s. I maybe hyped us up a little bit. I thought maybe we would see that double cork, but she's working her way up to right. it. So really smooth full Again, run. We saw it on run one. This is the approach from Maggie, right? Yeah. It's the it's the steady climb. Just let my name be there as the dust settles on the last couple runs. And is this a better run for Maggie from what we saw from run one? Definitely a better run. So improvements on the rails and on the jumps. And this is what we saw her do in Aspen. Wow, Maggie nice. voice it taking over first place. And now so Julia's got the best run of the day, but Maggie's been skiing Correct. the best of the day. So those of you watching at home that don't quite understand the judging, it's because Maggie has two really good and totally different runs. Overall Where impression. Julia's got a fall right. and a really good run, but one more very good variety run from Julia, and she can take it back over. So this is why this format's cool. We see a lot of action. So yeah, Maggie jumping up there with those two very unique runs. Oh, very cool there from Matilde with the switch five, doing the nose drag sort of butter across that knuckle. And there's a nice clean 540. So coming off that top spider rail early and then opting for some stylish, fun maneuvers here. Look at this, dragging. I mean, we might need to bring women's knuckle hook into the, into the play here with uh, cool, stylish moves like that. That was a knuckle hook trick. There's the 540 with the tail grab. So very smooth, but not a massive run, just like consistent. Right. And again, style proving to matter as Grimaud jumps up into second place. And wow, Julia Tano, the switch nine and the 10, and you're telling me that's third place right now. It's a new format. It's not just your best run counts. It's all about who's skiing the best that day. So here's Johanna Keeley sitting in eighth place on her second run. Had a big crash on this rail in run number one. Gets the switch to 70 here in run number two. Going 900 on that first jump. Coming in switch, did the switch double cork last night. Will we see it here? Opting for the switch, 720. So I think just wanted to get a rundown. She has the double right. cork, but let's get a rundown, play it safe. After that big Yeah, who bail, could blame her after that fall on run one? There's the trick that took her down in run number one. Absolutely clears the tails, gets the switch to. There's the final switch, 720. Hoping to turn that one into a double cork in the coming runs. A lot of Johanna fans, as you might expect here at X Games Norway, but it's Maggie Voisin, the American, leading after two runs here in the Women's Ski Slope Style Final.
Welcome back to day two here at X Games Norway. We're in the midst of women's ski slope style. Brandon Graham alongside Tom Wallace here in the booth, and it's Maggie Voison leading the way. But there you see Johanna Kili, the lone Norwegian, certainly has the loudest cheering section here at Hafjell. We caught up with her in downtown Lillehammer. She looks to add an eighth X Games medal. My name is Johanna Kili, I'm 22 years old and I'm coming from Dumbos, Norway. Johanna Kili in front of her home country. I still get goosebumps when I'm talking about it. So far, very good. And I was the last one to draw. Will she be able to overtake that top spot? I landed my run in front of my friends and family and got a score of 90. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and it put me in first place and it was <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yeah, the level of email free skiing has been growing a lot lately, so it's gonna be uh, cool to see what's going on this year in Halfield. Yeah, I went and watched the course yesterday and it's huge. Yeah, I always watch the photos of the course before I go to an event to like plan runs. Uh, it's really steep, so it's going to be interesting to see how that works. It's going to be a good event. Beautifully all shot on an iPhone there, but uh, Johanna Keeley's got her work cut out for her. She's sitting in seventh place. Let's take a look at our top three thus far, though, Tom. Yeah, Julia putting an amazing run down, Matilde with some stylish maneuvers, and Maggie Voisin, the American, sitting in first because of her two very unique and dial runs. Back-to-back -back 900s, no double cork in there, but still two very, very solid, very clean full pulls has her sitting up in that top spot, but a lot of action yet to come. It's time for run three. And yep, when we talk about overall impression, when we talk about body of work, it's no accident that Maggie Voisin thus far is leading this contest. Definitely full runs, consistency, and very technical tricks all combined into that top spot. But a lot of action here. We still, we got a little fog that yeah. looks like it just rolled in, but not gonna stop Mag Margo. She's going for it here. Front side 450, the first woman we've seen go for that front side rotation over that spider rail. So just going down, unfortunately, on that one. So Margo Hackett not getting it done on that spar spider rail, excuse me, but again, no throwaways here, so she presses on. Pressing on with that 270 onto the down rail. Here going left side, 540. Let's see if we'll see the switch right side, Misty 900 here on the bottom hit. Nope, just using it as a warm up, checking the speed. She does have that switch 900. We saw it in run number two, but gonna look for the next run to put that switch 900 down. Here's where she had some trouble though, up top. Gets a little bit off axis and just taking that one to the hip, ouch. And as you said, Tom, the visibility now becoming a real issue with that fog. If anything, it appears like the fog is sitting directly on the rail section of the course and then the jump section where the visibility is needed is, is clear Clearer, still. So right. we're right in the cloud, sitting right in this cloud as it uh, kind of moves through. So here's Megan Oldham, who's really ridden well, particularly on that first run, but it's really a testament to the four ladies in front of her. That's why she sits in fifth right now. Yeah, been smooth and consistent, but coming off a, a little bit early on rails like that, those minor deductions on each of these runs has kind of been the thing that's keeping her in fifth and off of that podium. Oh just going for a right side 540 there, and then not quite having the speed. So we saw the 720 on run number two. I think she might have been hoping for the seven, only getting the 540 and then bailing on the last jump because of it. And you can see down at the bottom, it's clear. The fog line just sitting, oh, and clearing up up top. So sort of just moving through. 
So here's Isabel Atkin, who took a very unique line on her second run. Will we see more of the same on run number three? Yeah, I like that one. Using the quarter pipe feature, very creative. Gapping up onto that down rail here, going for the drop out rail, just taking it to forward. So quarter pipe there gets back onto the down rail. And then will she go for the unique line? Nope, going straight off of this one. Oh, gets the 720 there off the center jump into the final hit. Big right side 720. So going back to back 720s there, stomping another clean run. Here's that left side seven gets the safety grab so going a little small on that jump but then going big on this final hit the right side 720 reaching back for the tail grab and another clean full pull it's interesting for atkin she's sitting in fourth tonneau certainly with the bigger tricks in the big section right in front of her definitely so that's you know is it dependent then on how many consistent runs you've done or the hardest run. I believe it's gonna come down to still having a full run that consists of very difficult tricks. So hasn't moved up yet. I'd be surprised if we see her take over that third place spot. Julia's run was just that technical that with only one down, it still is that good. So oh. here's Jenny Lee Bermanson sitting in sixth place. There's one of the more technical rail tricks of the day. We talked to the judges, and they're really liking that front side switch up, front side 270 out, highly technical. And the switch, 540. So sticking kind of to the same run, just flowing through it, looking like she's trying to improve on the run every time, but not necessarily going for broke or trying something incredibly difficult on the jumps, just keeping it stylish. The switch seven to the left and the switch five to the right again. Well, the rail section gave her trouble on run number two, was able to clean that up. And we'll see if she climbs it all out of sixth place, but she does one spot. We now move on to Julia Tano sitting in that bronze medal spot. Can she clean things up here and possibly jump up a spot or two? I think so. I think if she puts down another run, even if it doesn't have the craziest tricks, having two really good runs, two good runs, one of which is maybe one of the best runs of the day right. with that double cork and the big spins, it's just, there we go, front side switch up. Pretzel 270, so matching Jenny Lee on that one. Going switch 540, so lowering the technical degree of difficulty into this bottom jump. Going right side 900, so looking to get another run down. So spinning to the left and right, no double cork this time, but opting for a new and varied run to show off her skills to the judges. There's that rail trick that we saw, highly technical. Switch left side 540, and here's the right side 900. So getting the tail grab, coming around smooth, another full run. That's definitely gonna help improve. Will it move her up? Not sure. Doesn't appear so thus far, and it looks like third is where she will stay. So here's our current leader, Maggie Voice, and steady as she comes so far today, Tom. Yeah, no real bobbles to speak of. She's been smooth, consistent, doing that switch 270 up top, then the 270 out there. So looking to be sticking to the same sort of flow. She has been 270 on, no spin out. So looking for a different trick than our first or second run here, going right side 720. So opting for the mute grab. Here's where we saw the rodeo nine and run one going double cork 1260 oh. oh there's her coach dave euler of the u.s free skiing team up top just a look of disappointment so close but not able to hold on to that double cork rotation here it is let's slow it down gets the safety grab coming around and just a little bit on that amplitude side goes a little big and not quite able to keep her feet under her so still third run she should get another run, have another opportunity to give that double cork rotation a try.
if she can put that one down, she's going to be tough to beat. That's going to be shutting the door on the rest of these women in the field. Everyone wanted to see that, but potentially a door opening for Mathilde Grimaud, who's sitting right behind Maggie in second place. Switch 270 off a little early, but then able to get over to that other rail. Matilde is another one that's capable of those double corks maneuver, maneuvers. There's a very smooth front switch up on that elbow feature of the side of that spider rail. Going for the hand plant. This is a smooth run so far, other than that bobble up top on the switch two. Into the jump section. She excels on the jumps for sure. The rodeo 900 to the right doing some speed checks into this switch hit at the bottom. Going switch 720, so not huge on the technicality side, but another full run. The rails, however, but look at this one. Switching up into that elbow, able to grind the thing the whole way to the end, really showcasing the balance. Here's the hand plant up on the coping of that quarter pipe. 270 onto this rail, so very fun, very stylish rail run, and then kind of a little bit more basic on the jumps from what we've seen from her. We've seen some double corks, some big 1080s, and keeping it to the seven and the nine, but still smooth, has her sitting in second. Yeah, I like the play thus far, especially knowing she's gonna get one more run. Hey, if I clean things up, especially after Maggie goes down, could this potentially be something body of work that Let's me leapfrog. Doesn't seem to be the case, but perhaps on that final run, here's Johanna Keeley. So yeah, huge advantage by going last in this format. You're able to see your place. You can see what you need to do to make that final leap. Right now, sitting way back, Johanna's gonna need to bring out something very big, possibly that switch double court to help catapult her up onto that podium. Going switch double court 1080. Oh. Oh, just going down on that landing. Unfortunately, that is a signature move for her. And when she stops that one, it's incredibly hard to beat. It is a very technical switch to switch double cork. Great on the rail section here. The switch left 720 gets the safety grab and then just not quite doesn't have the speed, maybe misses her grab and it kind of throws her off. So weeks her feet under her, able to not take that one to the side at first, so just not enough amplitude off that final lip to get her feet fully back under her, but hey, you got one more run. It still matters about your single best run, so if she's able to put down that run with that switch double cork, totally still possible to get on the podium, just gonna need to lay it down on this final we talk about the international field in this one, got this note from researcher Nicole Gion that athletes from six different countries have split seven gold medals so far here at X Games Norway. Will that become seven countries here after this event? Margot Hackett sitting in eighth. Huge international field. Really cool to see how much these sports have spread around the globe. Margot representing New Zealand out here, so Coming in left, 540. Here's where she's got that 900 to the right. Will we see her dive it forward, going for the tail grab. Oh. Gets the landing just barely a little bit backseat. She's been having trouble with that one all week. Here's that front side 450, though, where we saw the big hip check on the previous run. She stomps that one with authority. And this one just diving forward, not quite able to get her feet fully back under her going a little bit backseat on the landing, but she's got a smile on her face, having fun out there. Megan Oldham sitting in sixth place as we're closing in on the three minute mark. That clock may expire before all of the riders complete their fourth runs. Don't worry about it. Everyone will still get the same amount of runs here today in this final. So Megan currently in sixth, our big air gold medalist from last night. So. We're looking for something big on this final run. Sitting down so low, you, you can't just do a safe, fun run. You need the big bangers, the heat, something really technical, possibly a big double cork at the end or something to jump and leapfrog up onto that podium. 
There's the right side 540. And here's the final jump switch. Will we see the 1080? No, no speed. And really, yeah, Megan should be comfortable on that jump. Coming off the big win last time, but maybe the rain, something about the conditions today, having a little trouble with the speed. So where we saw the consistent landings last night, not able to lay down anything huge on that final jump here today. So it doesn't look like Megan Oldham will add to her medal collection after that gold in big air as she's not able to jump up into podium position. Here's Isabel Atkin, who's just on the outside looking in right now, Tom. She's been sitting on the in that fourth place position for a while. She had a good run last time, but it didn't have enough technicality to help her jump onto the podium. If she can kind of up the ante, she's right there, just off definitely has a chance to get up on it. Oh, going for the quarter pipe there. Let's see on these jumps, carving around, looking for that side hit. I love this one. Going off the side of the quarter pipe, Rodeo 540, only woman doing that feature as well as that trick. And into the big switch, oh. nine. Oh, she was going for it that's what she needed she wanted needed to combine that big rodeo rotation off the side hit with the switch 900 but another woman coming up short on that final jump there's enough speed we know there's enough speed they're doing maybe just a hair too much speed checking and it's hard to see out there but maybe a little bit of wind so but to your point I love the recipe. She knew what she had to do in she the did. jump section on this final run and just couldn't complete it. But we move on now to Jenny Lee Bermanson. Sitting in fifth place. Very smooth there on the blind side surface switch up on that first rail. Coming off that rail forward this time, so not having trouble with that sort of switch variation she struggled with. And we know the judges saying that they love her rail section. Just this trick specifically. Oh, gets it again every time she has got that one on command. The front side switch up, front side 270 out. Again, the switch left 720. So no variation on these jumps, keeping it the same. Looking to just improve possibly on the grabs. Going, there we go. Upping the ante with a 720 to the right. So back to back switch 720s. Here's that. Reaching down, grabbing safety. And then here's the trick the judges are loving that we saw some of the other women start to add to their run. They saw Jenny Lee do it, saw some good scores, good ranks coming out. And then there's the switch 720s to finish things up, getting a hug at the bottom. So given the tech, given the switch on the back end, is that enough to knock on the podium's door? No, it is oh. not. She moves up a spot, but not into the top three. It's tough. The level, the podium is a different level. Those three women are really in a league of their own right now with the technicality and the tricks. I think it's, you know, unless Johanna in this final run can put down that switch double cork, our podium is looking pretty set. But that's the advantage of being the last one to drop in, which Johanna is. Yeah. She's the only one that can really shake up this podium party. But right now, Julia Tano is trying to better her positioning as she's sitting in that bronze medal spot. Having that really, really solid run in run number two, and then just looking to put down another hammer to really step on the gas and move up that podium. There, going for the switch, 900. So another run. Op she opted for a slightly more simple run in run number three after that double cork, and then now switching it up once again and bringing out the switch 900 on the final hit. So, so many big tricks out of Julia on this final jump, the double cork, the forward 900, and the switch 900. So did Julia show enough to possibly jump up a spot or two? That's tough. I think, I mean, she showed a lot of variety. I think it's definitely a little bit of an improvement, but 
I don't know if it's enough. Matilda and Maggie both have been so smooth and so consistent, especially if Maggie can put down this double cork, she's gonna be almost impossible to beat. She is our current leader, Maggie Voison. Has a huge trick to end this run if, he, if she can put it down. Gets the right side 720. So here's where we saw the fall in run number three. Coming in with some speed, going. No! Oh, simply staying on the 900. So Dave watching on from the top. Her coach, she played it smart there. She came into the jump. As soon as she set that rotation, she realized she did not have the speed necessary to do the double cork and opens up creates sort of a wind sail or wind flag with her body to keep this one from going double. Part of what has gotten Maggie Voison into first place has been the consistency and the clean runs. I get it going for it like that. It certainly opens the door for the next couple of skiers, but that's what's gotten her thus far. Now she's forcing these skiers after her to come chase her now. Yeah, I mean, no better place to be. A little nerve wracking, but to be sitting in first, watching your friends ski, not too bad. So here's Mathilde Grimaud. She's right behind her in silver medal position. Oh, going for that switch up maneuver again. Very technical to stay on that rail the whole time. And Maggie sitting in first with only two athletes to drop is guaranteed a podium finish. Matilde smooth on that 270. So off the spider rail a little early, the rest of the rails were completely solid. Very clean on the rodeo nine to the right. Here's the final hit, the switch, double cork. Oh. Oh, just barely going down with the switch double cork 1080. So same trick we saw to Johanna going with the safety grab there and just coming inches away from stomping that one. Oh, there's the big spin up top, cutting over. Here's the rodeo nine, gets the safety grab the entire time. So smooth on that one and just inches away from nailing the landing on this. A little bit of a boot grab, but able to put her feet perfectly under her and then just a little too much rotation, puts the hands down and down from there. Oh. Maggie Voison waits on because there's one skier to drop in with the ultimate home course advantage. Johanna Keeley, our lone Norwegian in the field. She is the last to drop in here today. Now she's sitting in seventh place. She's had a tough go of it today. We've seen it before. A massive, innovative run has potentially put someone over the top. She's going to need that and more if she wants to knock out Maggie Voison or even get into the podium as she's sitting in seventh place. Definitely, it's gonna need to be an absolute hammer of a run to take over the top spot, but even if she has a good run and is able to put down that switch double court. I think it has the ability to definitely break onto that podium. She's just gonna need to be as perfect as possible. A little early off of that rail, but still, I think if that switch double court goes down, she could stand a chance at breaking onto the podium. There's the switch 270, so no problems with that one on this run into the jumps. Left side, 900, getting the tail grab, even with that high landing. Here's the switch hit. Will she go double switch, double cork, 1080? Yes. Stomping it in front of the home crowd. Johanna Killy doing it for Norway, going massive on the double cork, switch 1080 on the final jump of the event. That was the run we were waiting for from Johan Akili, certainly her best of the day. Now the question really becomes, Tom, where does that jump her up? Clearly in seventh place, we will see improvement. Does it best Julia Tano or even Mathilde Grimaud for third or second place? Yeah, this is all up to the judges now. Comparison, comparing the consistency of Maggie, the Julia Tano's double cork and her extra variations of runs, all that mixed in with what Matilde's doing, Jenny Lee's technicality on the rails. Where to place her, comparing that big double cork with some of those other runs. There you see Maggie Voison waiting to see how the judges 
will rank Johan Achilles final run. And it's official, Maggie Voisin holds on for gold. Maggie Voisin consistent all day, doing those first two runs super, super solid. Mathilde Grimaud with the silver, Julia Tano in third, and if anything, I think Johanna just in fourth, just based solely on the rails on that final run. Had she gotten a full run, she would have definitely bumped onto the podium. That is Maggie's second slope style gold. First and foremost, I just want to give a huge shout out to all the women. The level of skiing is just next level, but you came out on top, your second gold. What was the key to your consistency out there today? I mean, I think today the weather was really tough and you just kind of had to roll with it. And all of us girls were strong skiers. So just tried to stay consistent. Bummed I couldn't get that dumb tw that dub 12 to my feet. But it was a dumb 12. It was a dumb 12. <laughs> the echo is making it hard to talk. But yeah, no, just so stoked, um, super grateful. How excited are you right now on the second gold medal? I cannot believe it. Uh, just getting a podium yesterday and then getting this today. Like I said, I'm so grateful, but more than anything, today is, inter is Women's International Day. And I just want to shout out to all the ladies, the snowboarders before us who inspired us on the slope course, and just so stoked to be one of the females in action sports representing fe the women. Absolutely. Well, congratulations again. And who runs the world? Girls! <laughs> well said. Congratulations to Maggie Voisin, a silver in big air, and now a gold medal in slope style. Also, have to congratulate Julia Tano and Mateo Grimond. Those are their first ever slope style medals, so some history making for those two. But today, it's all about Maggie Voisin. Walking away with the gold and so cool. I mean, we talked about it earlier, the level of international in this field. So many women from all over the world competing, but the American Maggie Voisin walking away with the gold today. MVP of the weekend in ski so far with a silver and gold medal. So look at our final results. Maggie Voisin, Matteo Grimaud and Julia Tano wrap up our top three. And as you said, Johanna Keeley with a studly <laughs> final run, but it was only good enough for fourth place, Tom. Here's that technical rail trick by Matilde. She unfortunately couldn't put down that switch double cork maneuver. Otherwise, she would have had a chance at that top spot, but great run there by her today. A lot of talent all across the field. Here's that final hit from Maggie, just not quite able to get the double 12, but the consistency, the 900s, and the style across the board gets Maggie Boysen the gold. Maggie Boysen two for two on podiums, and the cherry on top, a gold medal performance here in slope style. The second gold of her career, the seventh X Games medal for Maggie Boysen. One thirty, yeah.